So in this session, we'll see quantifier equivalence. So what is in quantifier equivalence? We have to prove it in both the ways. Like when I just write a formula like this, some x quantifier equivalence of y, it means that I am able to prove taking x as a, a premise, I am able to prove y. And similarly, I'm taking y as a premise and prove x as your result. So that is your quantifier equivalence. So here I have taken one example. So one difference in this example is like we don't have this p of x, p of y, when all. Okay, so I just take it as a universal quantifier. So here pi represent a formula and psi represent a formula. Okay, so both the things are some sort of problem formulas. Like I can write pi as uh, x, p of x implies q of y or something like this. Okay, we can consolidate everything all together into a phi and this formula actually works for all conditions. Okay, so now I'll show you how to prove it. <clears throat> so here, let me take the first constraint. Like I take there exists an x of phi or there exists an y of psi. And with that, I'm going to prove it as that exists of x, phi or y. Okay. So how we are going to do it now? Now see, like when I take this formula, so here the binding is actually, first I have to break this R. Then only I can move on to this in your, like inbuilt one. Okay. So first I have to concentrate on removing this R criteria. So how you actually remove an R, R elimination? Like when I just write it as P, R, Q, I cannot directly, when P, R, Q is valid, it doesn't mean that either P is valid or uh, we are not, able to mention whether p is valid or q is valid. So how we are going to prove it? So we take p as an assumption and q as an assumption, we derive to some term. And if the term matches, it means that the term is valid. So that is how we use this R elimination, right? So we are going to follow the same procedure. So I'm going to, or like this is a given premise. So first step is I'll just write the premise for all x pi or for all x i. So this is a given premise. And with this premise, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start proving it. Like first I have to take this and I am I want to prove, derive to this term and I have to take this and derive to this conclusion. If I am able to do it in both the ways, then it is valid one. So I start with there exists an X of five and this will be my assumption. And now I need to break this and I have to use it as this formula. Okay, so how can we do it? So like, well, how will you eliminate it? this that exist of X here? That exist of X elimination works like this, right? So we start with the term and then we make a substitution. Like we will uh, derive this X naught instead of it. So I start with a term X naught. I'm rewriting my formula. This is my formula. So I'm just rewriting this formula in terms of X naught substituted as X. Okay, so I start with this. And if I am able to derive this, then it is well and good. So now, fourth step is, we have given that one term is valid. Okay, using your R insertion, if one term is valid, we can merge that to any other external term. So I can rewrite this as X or psi of like this is valid so i can merge r with any of the statements so by r insertion of step three i can write it as x naught by x okay and now listen like i have uh like how i want to insert this like here it is almost similar so we have r and psi and pi now i want to write it as that existent x so I want to insert in that exist of X. How can I, uh, that exist of X actually works? This is very simple. See, when there is a formula with T substituted over there. So if at least one term satisfied, we can write as that exist of that formula. So here I can rewrite this as that exist of X. So here both this substituted with X naught. Okay, so I can write it as that exist of X and the formula is phi R psi. Got it? So I derive to the conclusion. So starting from a term, I'm able to derive to this conclusion. So this is your that exists of insertion of step four. Okay. 
So I think I almost done it. So first I start with the premise and I'm able to do it till this. Now the same way I'm going to, I need to do it in the reverse way too. So I have to start with there exists X of psi using the same set of formulas. Like, but here I'll be having it as, see, this is my assumption. Now I can make a substitution of X naught, but I'm going to make it in this X, uh, psi of X naught by X. Okay, so when this term is valid, I can merge it with R with any other term. So I am going to merge it as X naught by X or psi of X naught by X. Done. So now this is valid starting from X naught. I'm deriving to a conclusion. So if it is all fine, I can rewrite it as there exists of X with psi or phi. Done. So in both the ways it is done. So using your R elimination, so you can write it as, this is your fifth, six, seven, eight, and this is your ninth step. Now using your R elimination of step one, two, 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 five, and uh, six, two, nine, I'm able to derive the term. There exists X of psi or phi. That, so starting with this, I'm able to derive to the conclusion. So always remember the natural deduction rules here. This is not that we just want to focus on this universal quantifier alone. The quantifiers are again merged with the same connectives as and or implies and all. Okay. So we want to remember all those natural deduction rules when you want to prove it. So this is one way of connection. Like I have taken this as a premise and proven this. Now I want to do the in the reverse of it. So the next step is when you want to prove the equivalence, the next step is I'll be taking that exists of X psi or uh, phi. And with that, I'm going to pr prove it as that exists of X psi or that exists of X with phi. Okay, so let us start the proof. The first step is write the uh, premise. So here you have only one premise or phi. Okay. So now the next step is we want to break this. So we are going to break this there exists of X. We have to start with some X naught and write this rule in terms of your X naught. So the rule is phi or phi. So here I'm going to make the substitution as X or X, X naught instead of X. Okay, this is my assumption I'm going to start. And with that, I'm able to derive to a term that I can say that the term is valid. Okay, so now, both in pi and psi, we are going to make the substitution as x naught instead of x. So we can rewrite this as pi of x naught instead of x or psi of x naught instead of x. Okay, so this is your identical rule. Since I have the same terms to be substituted, I can rewrite the formula like this. Okay, so now this is done. What I have to do, now this is your R, like this is merged with R. We have to go with your R elimination. So how you're going to do your R elimination as you already know, like R cannot be eliminated directly. So I have to take this as an assumption and try to prove it to a term and take this as an assumption, try to prove it to a term. So I'll be taking this first pi of X naught instead of X. And what I want to derive, I want to derive to this. Okay. So this is connected using your R. So how can you insert an R? But if one term is valid, you can insert R and add the next term. So we can directly do it. So, right. so I'll just try to like uh, here I have pi of X naught instead of X and what is needed? There exists X of pi. So one term is valid. So this is the assumption. If one term is valid, I can write it with there exists X of pi. This is your there exists of X insertion. At least one term is valid. So I can uh, merge it as there exist. Okay, so if this is valid, I can connect using R to any of the set, uh, any of the other formula. So I can write it as there exist X of psi. This is one way of proof. Another way is 
seven step i'm writing over here i'm going to take this assumption as psi of x not of x this is my assumption and uh, for one term it is working so i can insert your there exist of x insertion there exist x of psi and when one term is valid i can merge that with any other term and what the needed conclusion is this one so i can write it as there exist x of phi or there exist x of psi using your r insertion for step 8 now listen this is your r elimination right like in step 3 i have two assumptions this is r elimination from step 3 from 4 to 6 i derive to a term this one and from 7 to 9 i derive to this term this one so both are same right so with that i can conclude it as there exists a x of psi or there exists a x of sorry pi or psi so both are valid so this is your conclusion so we start with the assumption and like always remember the r elimination method start with one assumption derived to a term start with another assumption derived to a term if both the term matches we are going to write the resultant one so this is how your universal e uh, quantified equivalence actually works so we have to prove it in both the ways like always remember that the given formula either psi or pi if you have any set of equal kind of sent, uh, statements you can make the substitution as pi or psi okay so when you look into your uh, given problem well you'll able to find the relationship over here okay thank you